warm good evening and welcome to it. I'm Thomas Mlambo. This is Sport at 10 and it's the Wednesday night. You've been looking forward to what we've got lined up for you. It's going to amaze you. It's going to surprise you. It's going to interest you. Let's get straight to the bench and find out who is coming onto the show tonight. Uh, there he is, uh, Samori Gambra. He is the brand director at Carling Black Label and we will talk to him about the innovations, the new things that are happening with the Champion Cup. Uh, right next to him, there she is. Uh, she's known as Jackie Demolition Trossi and as much as she's looking very calm, cool and collected there, she's a fighter. She gives knees, elbows, she thrusts and takes punches. And then right next to her, there she is, coming in to take on the Sport of 10 quiz uh, all the way from the Eastern Cape. In terms of born birth, it is Kanyam Kangisa. And you know her from Selima Matunzi, you know her from her acting, and she takes on the quiz. Did you play netball? Were you any good at it? We'll find out from you as far as that is concerned. I've got David Kagana. In the background, I've got BBK here with me. And uh, the uh, Sunday Times uh, sports editor is going to give us the lowdown as far as the news is concerned. Uh, how are you, BBK? I can guarantee you one thing. In his entire life, in his entire existence in this world, David Kekana will never be a black boy. Uh. I'm the only original one. Okay. He has aspirations. There you I'm go. still black and proud, and how are you? I'm too good, I'm too good, I'm You're too good. You're looking snazzy. But there's a lot happening. Yes. And when it comes to uh, what is going on in the world of athletics, we just had the Comrades Marathon, which was a great success. It was amazing. But we've also had some sad news coming from road running. Coming from Cape Town, a gentleman by the name of Nizam Isaacs. May the Lord bless his soul. He is no more. He was knocked down by a car while he was jogging in Cape Town in Claremont. It was a hit and run, pun not intended most definitely. And there is a gentleman who's been involved in road racing for over a decade. He started as a big size man. He was weighing 110 kilograms. I saw kilograms the big pictures there. When, he looked, he he looked much the bigger. And yeah. this is what he was looking out uh, it had closer to his, up his, his to this passing away. Developed the love, was pounding the streets and all of that. The sad thing is whoever did this they didn't even have the care to stop or even like to make a phone call to say that something like this had happened. I hope that the long arm of the law can actually find the culprits who did this thing. Uh, he had done uh, about 17 ultra runs uh, in his entire career being a marathon runner and he died on Tuesday morning and because he is Islam and uh, the reason that he was doing his run so early by the way Thomas is because it is the month of Ramadan so he wanted to get the running out of the way so that he could have his breakfast before starting his fast before sunrise. And now, the other reason that we are telling you about the story of uh, Nizam Isaacs is because we're already pulling out an appeal. I mean, he's a man who's in the athletics fraternity. If you were there, if you were on the corner and you saw what happened as far as the car accident is concerned, and you have information to pass on to the police, uh, the hit and run of an athlete on the side of the road left to pass away like that, it cannot be allowed to happen. So please get that information to the authorities if you have it. That is why we're leading the show with that story tonight. Uh, moving and on. And at 42, he was a baby, man. And now his wife and daughter are without a husband and a father, and his mother is without a son mm -hmm. because of a senseless act. Moving on to what's happening as far as Barocca are concerned. Now, Barocca is never without something happening. They're yeah. in the playoffs. You'd think this would be the calm time to keep everything the way it was. Don't change anything. We're in the death struggle. But then, this man here, Milton Lamini, who was promoted to being a co-coach, where is he now? He is uh, somewhere in suspension. Bam Vaisi? Bam And apparently there's going to be a hearing tomorrow. Now, what you see with Baroga is that the comedy of errors is continuing. Upon their arrival in the Premier Soccer League, Koloko Tobejane pronounced that they were going to win the league at their first attempt. He did not even succeed in taking the team away from the bottom four. And the next thing that happened, he himself was taken out of the picture and the Jacob Sagala was brought into the frame. Jacob Sagala did not last long because he came in, uh, he was uh, helped by Mark Harrison, who was going to be the technical director. And I think that uh, Williams was also part of the new regime that came through. He didn't last long because he was given a mandate to say you must win. Apparently four games in a row before we can. He did not agree to that. He stepped aside and then enter Milton. Milton comes in, seems to be like stabilizing things a bit, avoided relegation by the skin of their teeth because they finished 15th and as they were preparing for the playoffs, it happens that Milton himself is being shunted aside and then Tobe Jane was in charge of the game. This happened apparently because Milton had said something during a technical team meeting. I do not know, maybe there was a mole in the team that went and told the CEO 
forward the chairman, maybe Baroga are going to tell us the full details of what's exactly happened behind the scenes when they have their issues tomorrow. Well, the bottom line is it didn't uh, seem to destabilize the team today because they gone on to win their encounter. And we will show you what happened in the playoffs. So stay with us. It's controversial. Should one of the goals have stood? There's so much at stake. Being in the premiership is worth millions and millions and millions of rands at every decision count. So stay with Sport at 10 as we take you to the highlights of the match that took on, took place but earlier today between Leopards and uh, uh, Barocca. But before we get to that, let's talk about uh, what's going on with Bafana Bafana. The flight took off. They went to Nigeria. It's the Africa Cup of Nations qualifier coming up this weekend against an arch rival, BBK. What can we expect? Give me a preview uh, in your mind of what will be happening. Here's context. This is going to be match number 13 between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and Bafana Bafana. There's only been one victory for Bafana Bafana. It came in 2004, right here at Ellis Park Stadium. It was a 2-1 victory, unofficial, because friendly. it was a friendly game. So there's been three draws, and the rest of the games have gone in the way of Nigeria. So what is happening in the moment is that you've having Pakistan in the second coming, and his very first match, lo and behold, goes to Nigeria. It's going to be in Uyo. Now, Pakistan is coming back and saying that we are not going to Nigeria on some sightseeing mission to find out what is happening there and the lay of the land is looking like. We are going to Nigeria. Nigeria with a bit of attitude. We are going to Nigeria to say to them that we are here to make you pound for pound because it is crucial that South Africa oh. get their 2019 African qualifier first game off to a good footing. Don't forget that the other two teams in the group are Seychelles as well as Libya. BBK, Oti, pound for pound. Let uh, me, can I just remind you of what the statistics look like? Sure. We've won one game. Yes. They've beaten us seven times. You're telling We've me what I've already four told draws. you. draws. Let me tell you why no, I'm No, there's saying. one last thing I need to mention. Okay, tell me. In 12 games, yes. we've scored six goals. For sure. They've scored 22 against us in those 12 games. Right. Then we are going to go there with swagger. Esi Tatak. Let's look at the last game when Sheikh Mashaba was coach and we went to Nigeria. You and I were doing the game in the other studio with Rabbi Mori. But you remember? We what threw away a lead. I gave you a chance. We threw away a I lead. I gave you a Best chance. Leader. I gave you a Satro. chance. Best leader. Best leader. Best leader. Best leader. Best leader. And we had that attitude. We matched them that pound for pound. We had no fear for Nigeria back then. Tugel Orantia made sure that he got his name on the score sheet twice. Now, what happened on the day is, if you remember in that game, Uriye, Ule Tsulunyan, had been skating on thin ice. He already had a yellow card. I remember my comments at halftime if you were saying, if you were Sheikh Mashaba, what would you do in the instant outset? We could have taken Yeye out because he was already a danger. We're playing away. You bring in a jolly to make sure that we try and preserve that. And we allow them to come back. Of course, this is a problem. We also match them in Cape Town, by the way. Okay. In that little uh, uh, cholesterol. Yeah, and also, we wasted several chances. Because we'll you. you've got all the facts and yeah. the stats in position. Yeah. Here comes the question that puts sure. you in the corner. What will the result be in your mind after this game? Without professing myself to be a soothsayer or a sangwam, I am saying that if we play football Results. and we do not play with ah, any not, fear on Nigeria... What, what, what. You know the players who are going, you know who the coach is, you know the circumstances. What are you expecting a result? Uh, the result could be a draw. After we come all back with a draw in Nigeria. After all that noise, then you come and tell me a draw. Ah, so I if, I, if, if I were there, I would sa, be elsewhere. Sa. But yes, yes, something to tell you. This team, just like the Nigeria team, is a new team because when you have a new coach, most of the time, more often than not, our players raise their game because they want to, be make, to make sure that they are part of the team going forward. They want to make sure that they are part of the players that are going to be remembered as having helped South Africa going to the World Cup qualifiers and securing their place, being at the World Cup for the first time, forget 2010, for the first time since 2002. Xasa, press conference. Yes. Super Sport United are hosting one. Yep. A lot of the media are speculating what they are about to announce. Yep. What are you hearing? What are you thinking? Give us an idea. So Super Sport United are going to be without a coach because Stuart Baxter is now with Bafana Bafana. He's going to have his farewell game when he is uh, 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 taking Super Sports against Orlando Pirates in uh, uh, Durban uh, at the end of this month in the Netbank Cup final. A certain gentleman by the name of Eric Tinkler who did wonders with the uh, Cape Town City is a man who is from Rudeport, not mm. too far from where I sleep. And he is a man whose family is very much still in Rudeport, children in school and all of that. And if he's got an opportunity to come back to Johannesburg and go to a club with the infrastructure and the ambitions like a Super Sport United, I, I do not think that it's something that could stop him. Also, what we're hearing is that a certain root crawl is seen up and about in Cape Town. So that could be, that could very well mean that if John Comitis loses, Tinkler, 
he's then ready to maybe replace him with Kroll so that he can start now to make sure that they prepare for their off-season and not be caught off guard towards the end. BBK speculating, Kickoff magazine saying that they are uh, pretty sure from their sources that it will be Eric Tinkler named tomorrow as coach of Supersport United. That must be devastating for Cape Town City though. It will be, most definitely, especially for the players. And uh, I remember one of the interviews I did with Tinkler, I think five matches into the season. All he was saying is that this is an opportunity for these players to see that which they did with the Mpumalanga Black Aces finishing fourth. They can continue this thing and they can try and make sure that they show themselves as players who are not in a space where they need to go to a Pirates, a Chiefs or a Sundown in order for them to show what they can do. Look at what Manyama has done. Look at what Ngoma has done. Judas Mosea made it from the bench. I even remember how Pusha joined the club. He just walked into the offices and had I hear you guys are forming a club and they signed him. Look at how he's delivered for them. And the other rumor around uh, Rude Kroll being in Cape Town and maybe being the replacement there, that's the double treble coach, South African football. Oh, you've got to love it. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> and we'll be keeping a close eye on that press conference tomorrow to see if the rumours are true. Is Tinkler headed to Supersport United? Here he comes now. South Africa's one and only sports comedian. He is undefeated in four years of sports comedy. He is devastating. He has the uppercuts. He has the jabs. He has the knockout punches. He is none other than the shampoo nizer. Anyway. And normally he comes out much faster than that which yeah. is why today hey. i had to stretch it a bit what's wrong with you hey thomas i just got diagnosed by a disease called bong muzam tembu the guy who won the Comrades Marathon. Yeah, it's the Zulu disease associated with Comrade Marathon. <laughs> hey, it's, it's painful. I tried everything. I even went to Men's Clinic. Nothing works. Ah, <laughs> went, Nothing uh. works, Thomas. <laughs> yeah, I, Bung Musa, yes, yes, that guy can run. He ran as if he forgot something at home. <laughs> you know, you know, I was serious. At home that was guy, 90 kilometers guy, away. Yo, that guy. No, last year he came third. This year, first. That's a sign he'll never buy a car. We are a guy. Mm. We are a guy. This guy, it's a sign he'll never buy a car. He's the original Mgiji. <laughs> <laughs> this guy runs, my guy. This guy is, is running. But you know what's the hardest job in the world with Comrade Marathon? I think it's, it's being a Comrade Marathon commentator. Yes. What are you telling us that we are not seeing, my guy? There's no sugar line running. <laughs> We are just running. <laughs> We're just running, Babo. There's nothing you can tell us that we don't know. No, 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 no. Leave no. us alone. No. Or wrong, or wrong. Okay. Uh, someone is overtaking. Uh, four guys have broken away. They're now three minutes into the lead. Uh, the others are coming. The then gap is closing. Bored. You start getting bored. You're telling us irrelevant things. You can tell he was training at night. Look at the, t the complexion. <laughs> He's, uh, yeah. If it was during the day, he would be black like me. Stop, I'm not comrade marathon. Oh, woman. This disease, I got it from watching it six hours straight, my guy. It's like, watching, oh, it's like watching Titanic twice. Dololo Celine Dion. I think every time. There was Celine Dion. Buy a guy, buy a guy. How about how we now get you do yeah. that pose at the end? Oh, oh, did you see that American girl who thought this is home? I don't know if it's like, can I use every time? Yeah, you know why she, she couldn't finish? Uh. Recession. <laughs> <laughs> I told him you can't go further. We are cutting you here. This is recession, my sister. Refellam. Bongo Musam Tembu won, my guy. And people are jealous. No more. How does this guy win on Sunday and then when are you go jogging on Monday? What are you saying? <laughs> what are you saying? No more, You are just showing everyone you didn't go to the Comrade Marathon because if you went, we could see, because you look like the, the Sundowns dressing room. Injury for days. <laughs> Injury for <laughs> Sundowns is disappointing me. Legit like aspirants who are on Ramadan. You know how awkward you have to be? Oh, Jackie Mot was a jan. You know how weak you are? When, when I didn't eat, I'm so weak. I can't even win an argument. But to what rap is Sundowns? You guys are strong mm, on no, Ramadan. No, no, Each no. Each big Bafana no. Bafana won the Ghana Nations Cup here. They were also Bafana, fasting. Hey, hey, please, talking about Bafana Bafana, oh, we're going to oh, win oh, the World oh, Cup. Oh, Gabuza oh. is in. We're going to win <laughs> the World Cup. Gabuza is, is there. Gabuza. I think Baxter takes everyone. Oh, great. What's that? He calls everyone. Everyone, Makala Zalani has to say no. What is that? Oh, come, come, come. He's just saying, oh, oh, today I'm tired because I went to the Limpopo Derby. Yeah, Black Leopards versus Morocco. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's the one. There, you know, you are in Limpopo. Everything is happening different. Mm. You know, in the pitch, next to the referee, there's someone selling peanuts. I <laughs> 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 
like a manga. They had like all those, you know, like those Tonga gay guys just yeah. for distraction. Like, me queen guys. There's more Shampoonize as the show carries on that we want to hear from you as well on our social media. So make sure you get through to us and give us your views. It's uh, at Sporter 10 on Twitter. It's at Sporter 10 on Facebook. You can catch us on YouTube as well. And there is a topic that we want you to engage in. Can Barocca bounce back into the APSA Premiership? Are they the team looking to do the business? Uh, Black Leopards, do they still have a chance in your opinion? What do you think about Stellenbosch United? And also, which team of those three teams do you think is the one that you really want to see in the Premiership next season? So give us those views or read them as the show continues now. Now, because Barocca is the topic, uh, after the break, BBK doesn't leave because he's the Sunday Time Sports Editor. We will get to Samori right after we have looked at the highlights of the match that took place earlier on today. That game, Barocca up against Black Leopards, the controversy, should one of their goals counted, the three points now that Barocca have, the goalkeeping mistakes, it's all coming up after this, so stay with Sport at 10. It's edge of your seat stuff on the uh, Premiership in terms of qualification. It's edge of your seat stuff in terms of who's going to come up in the playoffs. Uh, Barocca are uh, right now in the front seat. But what will happen next? Uh, we'll talk about that with BBK. Well, let's get to the match that took place earlier today because this game had lots of things in it, BBK. A victory for Barocca, but yep. not without controversy. Not without controversy. Look, it left me wondering when I look at uh, Barocca's first goal whether Stevie Wonder was in charge of the game. <laughs> uh -uh. I'll tell you why. The professor is going to give us the insight that we need. Of course, but that's going to come on Monday. But what I saw today was devastatingly shocking. You have a situation where Baroga are attacking, and you've got a goalkeeper, here, Leopards, coming in inside the box. He gathers the ball, right? He gathers the ball, and then the attacker of Leopards knocks him. I'm not saying it's deliberate, but it did knock him. You know, with his knee on the head. The goalkeeper already had the ball, and then he let go of the ball. And what happened from then on, the guy takes over and put the ball into the empty net. But the situation is the goalkeeper already had the ball in his hands. Let's look. This is the goal you're talking about here. Letsualo scores. Uh, the uh, ball goes into the back of the net here as Letsualo puts it in with a little chip. But you're worried about what happens before that. Before this is the that, 11th minute I mean, of the let's game. go through by Here we go. Nakula. Goalkeeper has got the ball. Dolo. It's in his hands. Was it deliberate? Did he mean uh, that's to why I'm it saying, I, I'm not saying it is deliberate, but and the fact is contact happened. What? And the goalkeeper already had the ball and you have to protect him there. Uh, well, look, okay. But look at, look, he's got the ball. The ball is gathered. And then when the, when the contact happens, the Uba goalkeeper, Uba Dizzi, and it, it took eight, eight minutes to attend to him. And let me tell you, it was confirmed that he, had, he suffered a concussion. Mm. So he was not playing around. He was not just fooling to get a foul because he had considered a goal. I see what you're saying. The only question becomes, though, just because there's contact, it doesn't necessarily mean it was a foul. So I am saying. There might, there's a case there that the referee says, hey, it was a clash. They clashed. Game I'm played not on. The, clash. the ball the ended in the net. Is, as he we got can his see, treatment. the evidence tells us the goalkeeper had already cut at the ball. He only let go of the ball after there was contact of the attacker's knee with mm. the goalkeeper's head. Um, so, I'm, boom. I'm not saying it is deliberate, but okay. when that happens. Then Barocca go 2 0 up. It is Let's still the same man. He completed goal. his place. There's no controversy about this one. It is a clear cut. Yeah, it is a clean goal. What? There's no controversy. What are you saying? Uh, there's a comedy. <laughs> Oscar <laughs> has been doing this throughout the season in the yo, PSL. Yo. He's he got a wonderful scissors kick. That seems to have been the only thing that he did correctly because the primary job that is there for on the pitch to prevent goals from going in, he has displayed to have unashamedly and apologetically have butter fingers. And that is a classic case of this. And by the way, anyone who had followed my work and what I feel about the promotional playoffs and all of that would know that I think that the team that finishes 15 and 16 must go down automatically and number one and two must go up. It is a debate that we are going to have for, for, for the long of time. We've had it since time memorial. It's been happening for 12 years already. But I, I, I'm saying, I'm saying, you've had 30 chances, right? 30 chances of preserving your status in the PSL. Mm. 15 at home, Barocca, 15 away. I you have see, failed. I can see why this situation exists. Tell me. 
because if you've been in the premiership for a season yeah you've got all these sponsors on board yeah you've got overheads of players that are really expensive like the other 15 teams no 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 yeah but you but the guy who's in the in the NFD mm -hmm. he doesn't have as many sponsors mm -hmm. and he doesn't have the expensive players mm -hmm. so it hurts way more for number 15 to go down than it does in terms of not going up for number two. Just like it hates way more for Highlands Park, who had also been in the PSL for the last season. Yeah, they were number last. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think it's okay mm. for the guy at number 15 to get one final chance to try and preserve himself. And if that team who finished second from top in the NFD or third from top is good enough to beat him, they have an opportunity. Show me you're good enough. You go up. You've done I, your at job. least I have a you've chance to defend myself. You've done your job in the NFD for the entire season, just like you failed to do your job in the PSL for the entire season. 15, 16, bye-bye. One, two, up. Promotion. Who's right? What do you think? Give us your views. It's at Sporter 10 TV. Let's check it out Are you there. with yes. me in terms of give the guy who's got so much money invested just one more chance to survive, or should he go down automatically the way or BBK has to give the guy who's worked so very hard for himself Saturday, to get promotion. Saturday, Barocca take on Stellenbosch there, and that could be a huge one. If Barocca win there, they'd pretty much eliminate Black Leopards from the uh, playoff situation. If Stellenbosch win, everybody's back involved. Uh, that's the situation as it stands with all the teams having two games to play still. It's time for a break. After the break, Carling Black Label Champion Cup, new innovations. Uh, and we will also reveal in the conversation, I will ask the question, which formation is in the lead? Which way will Chiefs and Pirates be playing as it stands as of today? <laughs> The 2017 Carling Black Label Champion Cup is in full swing six weeks into the campaign and the first two champion coach finalists have been selected, they've been profiled. A total of 18 finalists will make it to the final selection weekend for a chance to coach their favourite Soweto team on the 29th of July at the FNB Stadium. To tell us more about the champion coach selections, the player votes and ticket sales is Carling Black Label brand director Samori Kambra. Samori, welcome to Sport. 10. Thomas, thanks for having me. You're going to tell me something that's really exciting, and I can't wait to hear about it because traditionally, I know over all the years that we've been doing the uh, Carling Black Label Champion Cup, when I want to be a champion coach, I go online, mm -hmm. I go on the internet, that's how I do it. There's something new, there's a new way. Excite me. Yeah, look, we want to spice it up as we're trying to do every year, and we're bringing it to radio this year. So, SABC, Africa Local Languages and Stations, we're going to be on there all the best in the nation. We're gonna be coming to you week in, week out. Real fans, real, real fans who want to be coaches, believe that they can actually have that essence to take their teams towards a win, mm. are gonna be able to duke it out on radio, bring their skills, bring their talents, answer questions about strategy. They got to be able to bring their A game. That's the only way they're gonna make it to the next level. So from that radio, yep. they can still be selected to be the champion coach on match day? Definitely by simply listening, calling in, being part of the SABC's five radio stations, which are partnering. Look, we're selecting people who are diehard. You're going into the studio. You're gonna actually go at it as against the radio announcers and the radio DJs, and they're gonna be asking you hard-hitting questions about huh. strategy, about formation, about the right players. Who are you gonna play in that formation? You gotta have your answers. Live on radio, that's amazing. It's gonna be spectacular. The tickets have been on sale since the 2nd of May. Now. How's that going? If I want to be at the game, what do I need to do some more? You've got that information. Yeah, so as you know, the season's wound down, and there isn't much that people are talking about in terms of football. And the best thing you're going to talk about is the Carling Cup. It's the Champion Cup. As I said last time, it's a Soweto Derby. You've got to be there. Um, ticket sales currently are going very well, mm -hmm. and the only thing I can say is get your ticket now. Um, whether it be 70 Rand up to 170, or if you're a baller and you want to get a hospitality suite, you can do that. Uh, CompuTicket.com, um, Checkers, ShopRite, you can get it there, but get it quickly. 
you know, you don't want to miss out for this one. Yeah, no last minute dot com stories there. Eh? Thomas, can you give us a free ticket? Get your tickets right now. How is the voting going for the players? That's really important. The formation. How's it going? What's in the lead? Who's in the lead? Look, it's been a great uh, uh, year so far. I will say that, I'll say it again, free voting has definitely worked. This new news about formation has worked. And we're in week six right now. And I believe by Friday, we're going to surpass total campaign sales, sales from last year. And we're only in week six. We did that in 18 weeks last year. So, Which formation is in the lead? That is what I want to know because I've been talking about it for weeks. You have the information. Which formations, as I talk to you right now, are in the lead? Look, there's, there's, there's no doubt that um, our fans, the, the, the champion coaches, they know their football. But at the moment, it is 4 4 2. On I, both teams? Yeah. 4 4 2 winning both sides. Yeah, I mean, it's quite shocking. I, either we're going too conservative or we don't believe we've got the right players. You know, we've got the transfer season coming up. But at the moment, it's 4 4 2. And I want to challenge people to say, is that really what you want? You know, you got to win this game. It's not about going up to show up. you got to actually win it. So is 4-4-2 going to work, or is it going to be something else? And you have still, um, what, 10 plus, or what, nine weeks to, to make a plan on that. Well, South Africa, there you have it. Tune in to your favorite SABC radio station, vote for your formation, and starting lineup for free, and stand a chance to be the champion coach. Samori, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for having me tonight. Jacqueline, the demolition Jackie. There she is, Jacqueline Trussier. She is involved this weekend in a historic event, the very first time anywhere on the African continent two women will fight for the flyweight EFC championship, and it is a huge occasion in the EFC. It's live on SABC Sport. We'll be bringing you that encounter on SABC3. It's going to be massive. However, Jackie, welcome to Sport at 10. Thank you. But I have to get into, I don't know how to get into the conversation nicely. <laughs> you fight. This is what you do. You fight. Not box, not karate. You fight. Yes. Why? Well, it's, uh, it's uh, adrenaline. It's um, fun. <laughs> fun? Yes. To trap somebody else? Well, it, it's basically, it's in the cage and it's like you're allowed to do it. So that's what makes it fun. Do you have issues, <laughs> anger issues that you just felt that I'm going to get into the sport so I can beat pe other people up? Well, I think being like like a, a mom and like also a normal uh, working person for um, working with a lot of people every day. So you got a lot of uh, things that you have to handle. So taking it out on fighting and like using it as a stress reliever okay. is like basically. <laughs> Jackie, and I think our viewers at home want to see you in action. So let's show our viewers at home a little bit of your, your fight action, see what you're doing. And then I also want to get into this conversation where you're telling us that you are a mom. So you've got uh, some visuals. We can show them to our viewers of Jackie in the ring. You're a mom of two. Yes. Two I boys. Am. Two boys. What do you tell them? Like when they say, Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> My boys actually, like in the beginning, they didn't understand what I did. And um, with the first fight, they were very upset, especially when I, um, the first fight I got knocked out, they were watching in their stadium. So they got upset about it. And, um, but after that, they like actually very proud and they also started doing like kickboxing now. <laughs> so you've been knocked out. Yes. And you go back. And look at you here, man, that's not nice. You're hitting no. someone else in the face. It probably is a nice, but it's a sport. <laughs> look, at, look at that elbow in the face, Jackie. 
<laughs> Can I ask you this question? Okay, and please, South Africa, don't attack me. I'm asking Jay because I'm interested. Um, is this really for women? Like, should women fight? Like, fight, fight, fight. Like, this is fighting now. Yeah. It's not like boxing where we can still say, okay, this is fighting. Yes. Is this okay? I think um, basically outside, it wouldn't be okay for a woman to fight. It would be like, really, it's not a woman's thing to fight. You know, you have to be um, not hard like men and just like f throw fists around. Um, but I think doing it as a sport, I, 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 I don't see a problem in it. I think it's, it's a sport okay. where you come home with black eyes where the potential <laughs> exists all the time that you could break a rib, someone's gonna knee you in the head, your teeth could come out. Yes. Th it's not just a sport. Yes, yes. Okay, well, it's more than a sport. Things can <laughs> go badly wrong. <laughs> Le uh, let, me, uh, let me say, you've got two boys. Yes. Would you encourage them to go into EFC fighting? Um, well, if they want to, I would. Which yes. I understand. <laughs> if you had a girl, what would you say? She said, Mom, I want to be in the cage. I would say, go ahead, my girl. Do it. <laughs> I love that, though. Because why not? If men can do it, why not? Women yes. go out there and also do it. And the thing is, the proof of why not is this weekend. Because not only are you fighting, normally yes. the women's fight is, you know, the first one when people are first sitting down and the arena is not full and they're still putting their drinks down and the yes. women's fight happens. The AFC are not doing that. This uh, is completely different. Yes. Why is this extra special for your fight this weekend? Well, it's it's very special because it's the first woman ever like uh, title fight. So we're going up against each other to see who gets the title belt. And then, um, which I'm sure will be mine. <laughs> oh, you're ready to take the title? I'm ready to take the title. Amanda Mad Dog Lino <laughs> has got something to say about that though. With a nickname like Mad Dog, yeah, I know she wants the title, but she's not going to get it this time. So demolition up against Mad Dog. Yes. This is it's a fight worth watching. But the other thing that's important this is it's the main fight, right? Yes. That's never happened before. Yes, yes. It's never happened before. And um, I think people are actually like looking forward to seeing that. The main fight. The main We're going to go through fight. all the men's fights. Yes. And then the women's flyweight EFC African Championship belt fight will be the last thing, the yeah. main event, the thing everyone that came there to see. But it's time. It's time that it's like the woman that's like the last fight and the, the main event. So, because it's just been the men all the time. <laughs> I just need to, one thing though, the fight against Mad Dog, against mm. uh, Amanda Lino. The last time you guys fought, I don't want to bring up bad things. Yes. But she knocked you out in 10 seconds. Yes, she did. We barely blinked and it was over. Yes. What's <laughs> going to be different this time? Well, I think this time all round, um, I'm a different fighter. There was a lot of aspects that uh, when going with that fight beforehand, um, I changed clubs. F um, I went to from one club to another club and then from that club to the club where I'm at now. So I've only been with my club for like two weeks um, prior to my fight. Mm. So there, there was a lot of emotional things going on. So you're better prepared on. now. So I'm very, yeah, I'm very much prepared now. And um, I'm also, uh, we worked on a lot of techniques and things that I, I've never worked on before. Final thing though is, mm. what are you? What what is your skill? Because all this fighting is not just throwing punches and things. You actually a trained, skilled fighter in a, in certain dis disciplines. What are you trained at? What are you good at? I'm actually good at. Um, we started at. I started at Muay Thai. So that's the Thai boxing. Yes, Thai and boxing. Then? So it's basically like all your limbs. So it's punching, elbows, knees, kicking. So mm. it's basically almost everything stand up. And then and. Um, then, while I've started at the club now, I've gone into working on jiu-jitsu and a little bit of kickboxing. Yeah. Um, you are just yo. a dangerous person. <laughs> You're just dangerous. Muay Thai, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu, 
in the hexagon EFC title fight. We're going to look forward to that, Jackie. Yes. Demolition, Jackie. Bring on the demolition. That's all I can say. I'm, I'm definitely really happy going that the to. women are taking it to the top and that this fight is the main fight on the weekend. All the best to you. Thank you so much. But wow, <laughs> you will not catch me, Shampoonizer, ever in a hexagon. Not even come and stake you. Do you see? Elbow to the face, Munna. Yeah, Munna. When I Thomas, you are playing games, Joe. You see that mad dog woman belongs in one. I have one word for her. It's the main. Jackie is so tough. Thomas, Jackie is so tough. What lap when she searches bonsas? You know you are tough when you get to the club like, yeah, let's wear a ring. What do you guys have? I'm a fighter. You know I'm a fighter. Do you fight? Um, no, I definitely don't fight. I fight hard. I fight poverty. I fight, you know. Yeah, I know you're close of a day. Yes, I'm very close on Jateta. Okay. I'm here, Thomas, with the face of Calamine. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's no fun. That's Ka <laughs> Kanyam Kangisa coming in. Demolition Jackie, thank you very much thank for being you. with us. Uh, and all the best in the big fight. Uh, we're back after the break when we uh, find out from uh, Kanya. She says she was a netball star. Star. Find out more after this. To make it worse, he asked if he can borrow 20 bucks for a taxi. After he asked you out? Yeah! Lame! I know! I don't know how to go to school. I said I decided on What? So I said I was going to go to school and I was going to go to school. I said I was going to go to school. Hala! All of that! Who was that that just left? Uh? Oh, that was my mom and the Minister of Trade and Industry. Oh, hectic. I told you, guy. So, you ready? So ready. You guys need to give me this picture. Everyone has their own flaws. Okay, this I'm is recent. Perfect. Can you prove it? I don't need to. We have camera footage and they keep it for three oh, weeks. That's our roller. Stay back before I slash your face open with this. Okay, okay. Please, just take it easy. Don't think so. Taking her back, taking her back. Kanyam Kanyisa, welcome to Sport at 10. You seemed amazed. Listen, I didn't even have any of that footage. And some of it dates back to, what, like six, seven years ago? You were still looking so young and so tender the there. Oh, now how do I look? No, you're looking good. Okay. I won't lie, you won't lie, I won't lie. <laughs> but I, I'm trying to put my head around how long you've been on our TV screens. It seems like people grew up watching you yeah i started out really young i was 15 when i started i was still in high school um i entered the spoiler request for fame competition to be a yo tv presenter and there were over 3,000 kids and i made it but now we are papa I like papa. these days we are papa oh but i've read that you started as a shy person i actually and still then you am... decide you're going to enter our spoiler oh yeah my mom was like why but i was like well let me try it out I am still shy though. Go pee. I am. Where? Wasn't I shy earlier when yeah. I walked in? Can I just give an example? Yeah. Okay, she walks in and she's like, I just need to take some pictures. <laughs> Will you take pictures? I phone. needed to do it for the I'm gram. I'm given the phone. I'm now the resident photographer. I had to do it for the gram. Is and that I had shy? to take advantage of this amazing lighting you guys have here. Thank you for taking advantage of it. But uh, Yo TV is the big break now. Yes. Three years on that. Then you move on from that and you go on to zone 14. You've just done so many things. But the thing that interests me in that mm -hmm. is that were you always just destined for this? Were, you know, did you have to work to get here? Was it just given to you? Oh, no, I had to work because um, after I'd done Yo TV, um, I knew I wanted to get into acting. That was so hard because every casting director was like, no, you're the Yo TV kid. Really? No, we can't believe you. We don't believe you. You can't play this role. And even after I'd l booked um, a couple of my acting gigs, I was always the girl in the school uniform because I always looked young. So it was actually really hard. I, it was hard work getting here. The most challenging part? Um, geez, I don't know. I think because I started young, a lot of um, challenges people who face 
um, challenges that people face now who started now aren't the same like when we started social media wasn't that big now people will just like throw anything at you but yeah I think I think it really helped that I started out young so I'm I'm quite immune to a lot of things well, I used to play a lot of netball when I was in high school before I was on your TV because obviously once I joined your TV I can play sports because now my sports was being on television. And you've described yourself to some in the media as a skilled netball player. I'm actually quite good. I'm actually quite good, Thomas. I'm really, really good. Position? Centre, of course. But that's where you have to have the spring, the pace, the up and down. I've got all of that. When is the time we can come and watch? We'll send our cameras for confirmation. I'll let you guys know. No, we want to see this. We absolutely <laughs> have to see this. And I did challenge uh, uh, Kanya before we came on the show. I said, I'm going to expose her for being a sexist. And we've just seen that women can fight. You know, we yeah. just saw Jackie, yeah. Demolition Jackie. Would you ever do that? No, never. Why? Firstly, my mom would be really upset. Elbow. And oh. also, I'm like a girly girl. I have a lot to take care of. Like you said, my nails. I don't want someone yanking my weave. No, <laughs> I don't want scratches on my face because then I still have to use it to act. So, <laughs> not for me. But here comes the sexist part. I went online and I was looking at your birthday party, yeah? yes. which was just now in March. Yes, and it was... And but well, go carnival, I understand it. Carnival, pretty. Go, it's wall-to-wall, spectacular-looking women. Yes. Only. No guy. Not only one. No. Just waiter. No guys, just ruin everything. No, but no, what's going on there? There's nothing going on. I How just wanted just to celebrate with my female friends. Pela. Yeah. So I actually don't even have a lot of guy friends. Miss Valela Ngapan. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Hey. Actually, I don't want to use that other hashtag that we use. Okay, yeah. okay. The trash is available. Yeah, yeah. They're all rubbish. Okay. No, you're walking straight into my trap. I knew you were going to say that because you've spoken about being single and hating it. I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. Uh, I never said I hate it. No, you know, I'll no, tell no, you please. exactly why I thought it was in the dispatch. And that is the paper from your part of the <laughs> world. You're from the Eastern <laughs> Cape. Papa Lengawe, the home girl, but she's single, but hating it. Now suddenly, men, hey, hey. You, I, you apparently you hate being single. I Are you even single? I am single. So why hate it? I never said I hated it. I don't know where they get that from. So they I'm definitely right. write about the being single part, but hating it. Okay, so I'm Nandi, you are okay. No, I'm like in between. No, it's not that I like it or I hate it. I'm just like, well, this is my situation right now. So, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. you know, you just got a deal. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you're running away from it, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Selma Tunzi. Yes. I mean, that's uh, been since 200, 2015. Yes. And? So I'm still quite a newbie, but um, I've definitely found my feet. Um, such a great bunch of people to work with. I mean, my colleagues, Vazi and Lunga, you know. So I actually do like men. I like those two oh, men. Oh, not when you're paying for the drinks on your birthday. <laughs> I want it's your birthday, you're paying for the drinks. <laughs> Dololo invite. No, but also, Selma Tins was just such a dream come true for me because, I mean, we all grew up saying, do go, do go. Then next thing, I'm like auditioning. And then I booked the job. I was like, wow, this is really cool. Uh, mm. Give us your flavor of do go, do. Selma Tins, Okay, I want to do it to camera. Thank you. Well, I'm Kangi Salona on Sports at 10. It's not silly, my twinsy, but do good, do good. This is the Sport at 10 cup. You can't have it, it's priceless. Okay, cool. But you can have the cakes I if you get our sporting questions right. So, Kanyam Kangisa, born in Petty in the Eastern Cape. Yes. <laughs> Tell us. Can you recognize this amazing woman that we are about to show you on the screen? She did something amazing as well this last weekend. Who is she? Her name is Shawnee Bosman. Shawnee Bosman oh! is the woman, the first South African to cross the line in the Comrades Marathon. Yay! So I'm going to give you that. Ish. I thought that was <laughs> the one that was going to trip you up. Where's Petty? Petty is literally in between Grahamstown and King Williamstown. It's literally one robot. So if you happen to blink, that's I why I'm asking you, because you're from Pedi. Mm -hmm. so you're from the Eastern Cape, mm -hmm. so you should know this guy, because he's from there, coaching there, doing things there. Oban. I do know this guy. Um, I struggle with his surname, but his name is Dan Ma. Dan, Ma. He's, the, he's, the, yeah, he's the cheaper 
um, United coach. We are support the chief. I don't really. I'm not really, to ah, be honest, eh, not really. Ah, yeah, you're no. from the Eastern Cape, Chipa Clean. Uh, okay, can I'm so support the Chipa okay, from now Is on. Is that the signal now? Yeah, just oh, well, <laughs> it's in the, what's the Chipa signal? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't support Chipa. <laughs> okay. All right, Dan Malisela, Dan yes. Dance. Half a point in Yanabe. Ah, there's no Dan Mal. There's no Mal. Dan Mal. No Dan Mal. I, That's Mazu Dan no, Mal. There's no Hobbs. Okay, final question. Tell me who this is. If you get this, then I'm just going to give you the cupcake straight away because this is tough. Yeah, no. No, I, I have no idea. No idea? Yeah. Couldn't you have given me a Serena? No, because the French Open is on right now. Oh, okay. And she is the last year's champion. You can't remember the name, last year's champion nope. of the French Open? She's no out idea. now. No idea. Muguruza. Oh. There you go. Jakala no liver. Jakala. Serena, why was Serena again? Ah, oh, how can we not? Black excellence, Baba. We play games. <laughs> Minio, it's not too sad. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Not too sad. And guys, I actually love cupcakes. Mm. Really? Yeah. Also, I have a question. Good to Vela comes this week, cupcakes, Ninja. Oh, so you're speaking closer. You know, you don't need to know closer. Like, you only, you only have to memorize the sound. Like, yeah, very chap, I'm chin, but I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm very good. I'm very good. What about yeah, your clicks? Your clicks. clicks. Mm. All I'm saying is that since mm. you didn't mm. invite me into your party, these Imagine. cupcakes are saying, mm -mm. Oh, please. You are not getting some. It's yeah, just no. that I like you here. Yeah. Oh, thank you. On behalf you. of those two. Because you're taking his job. <laughs> on Dugu Dugu. Cheers. Thomas, <laughs> I think Oscarine will be the face of Rama. He's got butter fingers for days. That guy, <laughs> that guy, that guy, that guy oh, well, he can't do anything. But uh, you Wait, know, you still need to explain yeah. yourself. Why am I the face of Kalamine? Does it mean like my Cause skin is glowing? Kalamine, cause but you, you see know? why? Do you no, see why? After when you get home and you remove this, you're like, woo, Kalamine, Kalamine, Kalamine. You know, our, our, our message is to go out to the people in Cape Town who have been affected by the storm and everything. Yeah, so please. Yeah, God is there, people. Don't lose, don't lose hope. But what about Tembisa? They went, Rina, ah, there's nothing happening <laughs> in Tembisa. If you could be a sports person, yes, who would you be? Serena, so without a doubt. Or Makayan be no, like, because people right love their Why? Uh, I would definitely be Serena. Oh, Serena? Why? Why Serena, the woman, if you could swap places with someone in sport, you would be that person? Yeah. Why not Ronaldo, Messi? Dr. Okay, Kumari. actually, Ronaldo as well. Oh. Yeah, especially mm. after. Mm. I don't want to say it wrong. And it's not Tracy. I don't want to say it yeah, wrong. Yeah, you got it very wrong. Earlier. Yeah, so mm. I have to think about this, especially after the Real Madrid and Juve. Yeah. 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 You know, earlier, earlier. No! Earlier, it's on social media. You can see it on Twitter. Ari Juve. Mm. Now I'm like, Ari, did you see well, there was a match Real Madrid Lee Uvi? Get a Uvi key in your nose. Thomas. Uh, Thomas. Uh, Thomas. Uh, Thomas. Uh, yeah. Thomas. Then she's now got the pronunciation yes. spot on. Uvi, Kai Yung Kang is a welcome uh, to the uh, world of knowing how to say the football names uh, properly you. and being a Chipper United fan. Mm. You've just been recruited. My last message is you can't go on holiday if you didn't make it to the top eight. Yo. 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 <laughs> That's it. We're going to leave you with the words that have now become famous and she's going to join us with that, you know, she's going to give us that flavor. If you are not watching Sport at 10, what, what are, are you doing? doing? Mona.